بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم قال تعالى ولله على الناس حج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيلا In this verse which I recited before you it's an invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala In this world when we get an invitation from the people we respond to it At this time, at this stage Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator our nourisher is inviting us to his house. So, and this invitation wasn't given to anybody. It was selected invitations to certain people. So you are the fortunate ones to be invited by the creator of this world, by the king of all the kings, the almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, Bunya al-Islamu ala khams, the Islam is built on five pillars. One of these pillars is a pillar of Hajj. By you responding to the invitation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are fulfilling that commands of Allah ta'ala and you are establishing the fifth pillar to make your building of Islam stronger and stronger. Also the ahadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the person who goes for Hajj, on a condition he doesn't fight, he doesn't use a vulgar language, bad language. When he comes back from Hajj as a newborn child, he comes from Hajj as a newborn child. Also the virtues of Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the sins. Hadith says that five salahs a day is forgiveness for the sins, daily sins. Jumu'ah to Jumu'ah is forgiveness of the sins, weekly sins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Ramadan once a year for forgiveness for all the sins, the annual sins. Also Allah ta'ala made the Hajj to forgive all your sins. So you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any sins. It comes from in some narrations, كَمَا تَعِيشُونَ تَمُوتُونَ The way you live, the way you die. وَكَمَا تَمُوتُونَ تُبْعَثُونَ The way you die, the way you'll be resurrected. In the life of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one sahabi passed away in Umrah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا يُبْعَثُ مُلَبِّيَا Day of judgment, this sahabi will be resurrected, making talbiya. لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ so imagine my brother and my sisters that you be you'll be resurrected leaving your grave with these words words of talbiyah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your effort and keep in mind that this journey of hajj is once alive you will never ever forget about it it will be always in your mind even when you come back you will be sharing the story with your families, with your relatives. Even 20 years later, you will find yourself still speaking about your experience. Keep in mind, the first step of Hajj is Sabrun Jameel. You need to learn what is Sabr. You need to learn what's to be patient. So Hajj is like a washing machine. In a washing machine, what do you do? You throw all the clothes inside. Many times you don't find certain things. Example, some, most of the time you don't find the socks. Why? Even though you put the socks inside, but where is the socks, you don't find it. The time of ironing, ironing all your clothes, then you find the socks. Time of Hajj, exactly like that. All the dirty clothes, all the dirty soles, gets all together in the washing machine, the tawaf and sa'i between Safa and Marwa. Don't complain. Don't complain about anything. Somebody pushed me. Somebody squeezed me. Somebody step off my, over my feet. This part of your journey. Like how the clothes go through a process of washing. Also you are going through the process of washing your sins. Just be patient. My best advice for everybody. Hold or guard your tongue. Guard your tongue. You'll be very successful. Good and bad in those three weeks. Just be quiet. I promise you after you had you say wow. Alhamdulillah I pass in the steps by keeping quiet. So coming back to Hajj. There are three types of Hajj. As you see on the screen, we have Hajjul Qiran, Hajjul Tamattu, and Hajjul Ifrat. 
Hajjul Qiran is when you combine your Hajj and Umrah in one Ihram. And Tamattu' after your Umrah, you shave your hair and you are free. Then what you do? The 8th of the Hijjah, you will don your Ihram. And the third type of Hajj, you go only for one reason, is to perform Hajj with one Ihram. With one Ihram. So Hajjul, hajjul Tamattu' what we do like now for you you'll be traveling from vancouver to any european country from from one of those european countries you'll don your ihram so leaving from here you'll be dressed normal you have everything with you when you arrive reason why we request the hujjaj to don the ihram from the this european countries because jeddah jeddah is inside of the boundary of a haram so the best way is, the best way, you don your ihram from this European country, or what you can do, you can wear your, the bottom, the bottom size of the ihram, you wear it, just normal, when, when before you enter to Jeddah, the pilot or the co-pilot will announce that Hujjaj, we request you to don your ihram. So what you do at that moment, just you remove your qamis, only for males, you remove your kameez, then you put the top ihram, the top piece, and you make intention, Wallah, I'm going for Umrah, and you start your talbiyah. So while we are here, for our sisters, the clothes you are wearing, actually for the sisters is very easy. You remain in your clothes. When you arrive, when you are in, at Europe, any European country, remain of, of course in your clothes, don't make any intention. They will announce, they will announce on the flight that we are coming closer to the Miqat. At that stage, sister, what you do? Intention, Wallah, my intention is Umrah to please you. After that, after that, you begin with your Talbiyah, Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik. After that, while you are sitting in your place, you perform two rak'ah of the Ihram. Two rak'ah of the Ihram. Now for the male something, demonstration how to wear the ihram it's very important so what i will show you now now i'm in vancouver at the airport i'm still wearing my kameez everything the same i landed right now in frankfurt or in amsterdam or in any country so wearing the ihram first thing pull your stomach in right pull your stomach in and just turn it around. At this stage, this stage, see, I'm pulling my stomach inside. The reason of this, I tell you the reason. So one pocket, cell phone, the other pocket, all your money. Now, you fold it like this. The reason of that, yes, you are going for Hajj and Umrah, but the thief also is waiting for you. So, if you lose your money, you lose your iman. If you lose your iman, you know what will happen to you. So look now. Now it's hidden. On the same time now, I will open between my, my legs. Right? There is here. Reason of this? So I can walk easily. And now, even if I wrestle with any man now, nobody can take it off. Look. It's stuck. Even now I can go run and play soccer now. See? So this is how we do it. Right? See here? Now? Okay. The next one, so what I'm doing now, right now, I'm at the European country. So my ihram is below my kameez. My money, my passport, I can keep it with my wife. Or I separate some money with you, some money with your, your wife, right? I'm still wearing my kameez. Now we are on the flight. Announcement, the announcement will say, Hujjaj, get ready for your ihram. What I will do in my place, take off my kameez, right? Then what I do? So the way, there's the way like that. The best if you have a pin. A pin, oh, there's a pin here. Put one pin here. And now, I'm done. I'm ready. So the lesson we take from Ihram, the lesson we take from Ihram is preparation for your coffin. There's your coffin. 
And the ihram has no pocket. Coffin has no pockets. So there is here, right? There is here. Now, I am sitting on the flight. I wore my, my ihram. Keep in mind, at this moment, this time, most of the people flying from any European country at this time to Jeddah, most of them are going for Umrah and Hajj. So which means the washroom will be very, very occupied. In my place, while I'm sitting now, what I'm going to do? Intention. Umrah. After that, لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك حرصت ما يتلبية in my place الله أكبر I made my two ركعات you can recite whatever you want to recite. What came in the Sunnah? Surah Li'ilafi Quraysh, Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad, Li'ilafi Quraysh, and Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad, O Qul Ya Ayyuh Al Kafirun, and Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad. Why these two surahs? Both of these two surahs speaks about the oneness of Allah. And you are going for Hajjah to prove the oneness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So now I'm wearing my Ihram. Now we landed in Jeddah. Jeddah is 40 kilometers away from Makkah al -Mukarramah. I'm still wearing my ihram. I, the minute you are in ihram, it means now you are focusing in your umrah and your hajj. I told you the best advice, keep yourself busy. Not with the stories, with Quran, dhikr, dua and talbiyah. And the best, if you control your tongue, the moment of hajj and umrah, when you come back, you will see the signs of the, your acceptance. Now we arrive at the hotel. When you arrive at the hotel, first thing, you keep your luggage in the room. Let's say we arrive 10 o'clock at night. What time are you arriving? Uh, we're going to be around midnight. Midnight. While you are at Jeddah, while you are in Jeddah, another great lesson is lesson of sabr. Not only your flight, not only your flight came for Umrah, you will find sometimes yourself standing at the airport for two hours. So be cool and calm. Be cool and calm. When you leave the airport, that subhanallah as if you've been resurrected from your grave. After that you start looking for what? I need just to rest. Right? When you arrive at the, at the, at the hotel, they give you your key. The whole idea I told you the phone must be one side and the car the other side is if you keep your card with the phone what will happen it will be disconnected itself when you go open the room you will find difficulty then you are forced to go down and if your room is on the fourth floor or sixth floor you find yourself up down up down not only that the whole hotel being used by the hujjaj your time will be wasted not only that when you come to the reception and you ask the receptionist to activate your card, you'll find yourself waiting in a long queue. To avoid always seeing the time, what you need to do? Put the card in a separate pocket, the phone in the other pocket. Now we are still at the hotel, at 12 at night. Now what should they do? I am extremely tired. I will say rest, rest, and whatever the plans is with the agent, then you can perform your, your umrah. Of course, when you wear your ihram, there's no hat, no kameez, no socks, nothing. Okay? For the ladies, your clothes are your ihram. In the hotel, I'm feeling cold because all the aircon will be on. Nothing wrong to put a blanket to cover from your neck right to your feet. But don't cover your, your head. Okay? So now, we begin the umrah. So if you look at this, the first one, qiran. What is umrah? Tawaf around the house of Allah Ta'ala seven times. Then Sa'i between Safa and Marwa. And the third one will be to shave your hair. If you shave your hair, your Umrah is done. We call it Tamattu'. So, the first one, what I do after Tawaf, I go for Safa and Marwa. This time I will not shave my hair. I will still remain in my Ihram. Wait until Hajj begins. When the Hajj begins, what I did, I combined my Umrah and my hajj in one ihram. My advice to you, do tamattu'. 
do tamattu. Second type of hajj. So again, tamattu means what? It means after you finish your umrah, you shave your hair, and you are done. Now, here on the picture, you see the route of hajj. This for those who are traveling by bus. You be uh, after the after hajj. After hajj, you'll be by buses or by taxis or you take the flight. Most of the time will be buses and taxis. You take the road they take that's called Tariq al-Hijra. The road of Hijra is the same road which Nabi Sallallahu took. With bus, it will take you 12 hours. With the taxis, 6 hours, 7 hours. So now we did our Umrah. Keep in mind, we are in Mecca at the hotel. According when I, I asked, your package is three weeks and five days in Medina. The Eid this year is going to be around 29th or 30th of July, around that, that date. Let's say now, we'll make it 29th, we minus five days, it means 25th. 25th, you are where in? You are where in? Mecca. Right? You are in, sorry, the, the, Eid, the Eid is the 29th. We minus, we minus seven days. Reason of seven days, so, uh, we minus eight days just to make that the eighth day of the Hijjah is the first day of Hajj. So we have 28 days minus eight. So 20th of July. When is your flight? 20? 20th. So you are flying the day, the day you arrive, the day you land, the day you land, you will be what? You will be the seventh, seventh of the Hijjah. You arrive at your hotel, you do your Umrah, right? You do your Umrah. After your Umrah, you get back to your hotel. In the morning, right? In the morning is 8th. First day of Hajj is 8th. So what you do now? Put on Ihram before Fajr for Hajj. So what happens, what happens now? You are, at, you are at the hotel. The agent will tell you, after the sunrise, after the sunrise, we are moving to Mina. We are moving to Mina. But keep in mind, you are not only one haji, you are a group of hujjaj. The agent will tell you, put your ihram before fajr. Sometimes they will tell you, okay, after fajr salah, immediately go to your room and don your ihram. Again, how to don your, 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 your ihram? You have a bath, right? Then, look here, leave Mecca after sunrise. Now, you have, a, you have a shower, you clean yourself, and you don your ihram. Same thing in ihram, what are you allowed to keep? There is no end away. There is nothing. For the females, it's different. For the males, you have only two pieces of cloth, the bottom and the, the top. Now here, put your ihram before leaving. So keep in mind, we are where? In Mecca. From Mecca, we go to Mina. Between, between your hotel and Mina is five kilometers five kilometers here the stage they will arrange for you buses brothers and sisters please listen take the bus don't be brave and say no i want to walk i will tell you when you walk i will tell you when for now save your energy save your energy so from mecca we go to mina we arrive in mina at mina keep in mind we need to perform five salah so the first salah in Mina is what? First salah? First salah? Switch up the light. First salah in Mina will be what? Dhuhr salah. Right? Asr salah. Maghrib salah. Isha salah. Then Fajr. So the Fajr will be what? The ninth of the Hijjah. Which means 21st of, of July. So in Mina what we do? Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and Fajr. After Fajr Salah, after the sunrise, what will we do? We go to Arafah. I'm going to repeat this. I am in Mecca at the hotel. The agent, the night before that, they will tell you, get ready tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, will be moving to Mina. Jump in the bus, don't be brave. Just jump in the bus. Gain your strength. Later, you need the strength. Why? Mina is not compulsory yet. So save your energy. So in Mina, now, I'm leaving the hotel. Again, what is Ihram? 
what, the, what, the, what do I know to do before the ihram? Have a bath, have a ghusl, clean yourself. You are allowed to use soap, you are allowed to use everything. When are you not allowed to use the perfume? When? After you done your ihram. What about the toothbrush and toothpaste? Nothing wrong, you can still use it. Right? I want to keep my ring, you can keep your ring. I want to keep my watch, you can keep your watch. Just don't cover your head and don't have anything covers the feet up to the ankles. I have a sock, I have mini socks or I have a mini hoof which is below the ankles. Can I wear it? Yes, permissible. After the ihram, I don't my ihram as I showed you now, the two raka'ah of salatul ihram. Next one, intention. After intention is talbiyah, right? A bath, there are two ways of having bath. Which one you like, you can do inshallah. The two raka'ah, as I told you, you can recite any surahs you like. Most preferably is surah kafirun, qul wallahu ahad. Or Surah Quraysh, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Intention, reality of the intention, your ticket, your journey, your ihram you bought, all that is part of your intention. But just we need to renew or to refresh our intention. Again, when it comes to the talbiyah, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ وَالنِّعْمَةَ Laka wal mulk la sharika lak. Don't stress about this. As much you repeat, you will memorize it. So don't stress about this. As much you repeat, you will learn. You will learn it, and you will pass in your test, inshallah. Now, for those people who says no, I want to walk. Okay, you will find yourself walking from Makkah to Mina in the heat. So don't complain because you choose to walk. Keep in mind, you are not alone. All the four million hujjaj will be on the road. So this is how it, lo it looks. From Makkah to Mina, most of the time they will take you through the tunnels. This on at the bottom, if you see, it calls the bridge. So you'll be find yourself walking under the bridge. When you arrive, this is how it looks from the top. Mina is only area of tents. Now, your agent will give you a bracelet or uh, elastic or a band or something to put around your wrist. Please keep it around your wrist. The reason why? Your identity, your ID is in that, around your wrist. If you get lost, we'll find you through that. But some people say, what do I need to do with it? Take it off. Okay, we won't find you. Even a month after Hajj, we won't find you. <laughs> Here we'll see, at Mina, there's Masjid Al-Khayf. At Mina is Masjid Al-Khayf. Keep in mind, my advice to you, make all your Salah at the tent. Because from your tent, as a Canadian, from your tent to this Masjid, at least three kilometers. Now, the moment of Hajj will be a lot of barriers on the road. The cops put that to monitor the pedestrians or the hujjaj. So it becomes seven kilometers of walk. If you decide to walk, I promise you, the next day you will not find your toes. You will not find it. And you won't be able to walk anymore. So again, advice for you, save your energy. I will tell you exactly when you walk. I will tell you just now. So Masjid Al-Khayf is in the boundary of Mina. Old days, it used to be very small. Today, mashallah, the expansion of the, the Al Saud, it's bigger, but not enough for the four millions. Now, your tent. You need to remember, you have your phone, take a picture of your tent. How do you enter? And my advice to you, there's no need of touring Mina because you'll get lost. You don't speak Arabic. Even if you speak Arabic, the soldiers or the cops won't be able to help you. Why? A moment of Hajj, most of the cops, most of the soldiers are not from Mecca. Most of them come from the different provinces. Because the moment of Hajj, they run short of main power. 
So they bring cops, soldiers from different cities. They don't know. Even if you try to speak English with them, they will tell you, Haji, turn left, and it is right. Haji, go left, and it means go right. So keep yourself, the moment of Hajj, Mina, Arafa, Muzdalifa, with the group. Again, I told you, is the days of sabr. Can you see how many aircons? In that heat, the aircons won't work anymore. So, in your mind, your travel agent promised you of aircon, of food, of this and that and that and that. Please forget about it. <laughs> the reason why? So, so you don't be disappointed. You won't be disappointed. How it looks, Mina? Can you see the tents on the right, on the left? Your wife, all the women will be on the right, all the men will be on the left. Right? So this is how it looks. Again, keep in mind, yes, you pay the package to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't say, I paid this package, but the agent gave me nothing. Brother, is your taqdeer to get nothing. Reason? Reason why? Reason why I'm saying that? Look, I, I'm just coming here for the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala. I'm not with you guys. But I'm telling you based on experience. But he promised me A, B, and C. I found nothing. So say, Alhamdulillah, that you found nothing. Now, there's an area he calls Missing Haji's Guidance Center. This is for those who don't listen, they get, they get lost. And I told you again, if you get lost, your Iman will be finished. Your Hajj will be finished. It's not an easy. So, husband and wife, if you have your fights, don't have your fight in Mina. Just handle him until you come back and you can fight with him. <laughs> right? So again, keep in mind, my advice to you, stay in your tent. You need to learn one, th one thing, your tent and the washroom. Outside is nothing. In that heat, again, save your energy. Now, in Mina, some people, mashallah, they decide to walk. While they are walking, all the tents look the same and they get lost. Where are you going to find your wife? Where? Now, I, I gave her, my wife a sign, a Canadian flag. You will see how many women have a Canadian flag. <laughs> no, my wife had a special burqa. All those burqas will come out the day of Hajj. Now, can you see that um, brown building? Brown building also is part of Mina that is for presidents, ministers, prime ministers. When they come for Hajj, they keep them separate. Now, we, we, what we did in Mina? Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha and Fajr Salah. Are we still reciting Talbiya? Yes. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. I am going to sleep, recite Talbiya. I'm going to eat, recite your Talbiya. I woke up from sleep, recite your Talbiya. Keep yourself busy with the Talbiya. So, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha was where? In Mina. Fajr Salah will be where? In Mina. So Fajr will be the ninth of the Hijjah. The ninth of the Hijjah is what? Is the day of Arafah. And the date will be? 22nd, correct? So from Mina, after the sunrise, again, brothers and sisters, be at the bus. Be in the bus and sit nicely. Why? From Mina to, from Mina to Arafah. From Mina to Arafah is about 12 kilometers. 12 kilometers. Don't be brave to walk. Because when you arrive at Arafah, there will be no energy in that heat. So right now, be in the bus. And recite your talbiya and be cool and calm. So in Arafah, what do we do? Dhuhr and Asr. Dhuhr and Asr. There, make sure you are inside Arafah boundaries. At Arafah, perform Dhuhr and Asr. Dhuhr and Asr. Why I'm saying save your energy? After the Zawal, after the Zenith, the Dua is accepted. Nabi Sassim said, Al Hajju Arafah. The whole Hajj is based on what? Arafah. So the eighth 
you had your energy. You saved, you looked after yourself. Okay? The ninth, also I am looking after myself. Why? Because I'm trying my best. After the zawal, I will be standing. Now the question comes, I will be standing in Arafah, in the tent or out of the tent? Where? In the tent, why? The tent is part of Arafah. You will find some crazy people who will say, I don't feel good, I must stand out as if the tent is not in Arafah. No problem, brother and sister, you go stand outside. When the heat hits you in your head and you start vomiting and you, your high blood pressure goes up, then you will say, oh yes, I should be in the tent. Okay? Now for those brothers and sisters cannot stand for long, is nothing wrong. You sit, you make your dua, but at least in between, stand, make your dua, and sit is nothing wrong. That moment I will say, brothers and sisters, now you still have time until the 20th of June. Write all your duas down. At this moment I will say, use your phone to make a dua. What I do? I go to the contact list one by one, one by one. I keep myself making dua for the contact list. Right? Again, don't make too much friends. You make too many friends, promise you, you will not have a time to make a dua even for yourself and your father. So, Hajj is not making friends. Hajj is to wash your sins. Hajj to cry for yourself. So we are the 9th of the Hijjah, the 22nd of June. Where are we now? In Arafah. Right? In Arafah. So in Arafah we pray Dhuhr and Asr. When do we leave Arafah? After the sunset. After the sunset again, my brothers, I will tell you something. You are not alone in Arafah. There are many people in Arafah. So if you want to use the washroom, time out yourself. 30 minutes before the time, use the washroom. So leave Mina after the sunrise. We are moving to Arafah. In Arafah, what do we do? Dhuhr and Asr. Because you use the bus, you will find yourself in Arafah. If the sunrise is 7 o'clock, you will find yourself in Arafah half past 7. So half past 7, half past 8. Half past nine, half past ten, half past eleven, four hours. Half past twelve is Zawal. What do I do? Four hours for me to rest. I'm going to rest. Why? I need my energy for when? In Arafah and at night. Muzdalifah because there will be a lot of stories and talking. You won't be able to sleep. Why? Because you'll be sleeping on the ground. The heat comes from the bottom and the heat comes from the top. you find yourself like the fish in the fry pan, <laughs> right? So what you need to do, save your energy because you need to use it where? In Arafah and in Muzdalifah. So after Arafah, which means after the sunset, after the sunset, you'll be walking to Muzdalifah. I will say again, jump in the bus, don't be brave. So from Mecca to Mina, walk, uh, be in the bus. From Mina to Arafah, in the bus from Muzdalifa, from Arafah to Muzdalifa, in the bus. <coughs> right. How does it look? Look there. Mina ends here. Mina ends here. So this side, Mina. The minute you pass, uh, if you are here, this side, you are in Mina. If you pass the pole, means you are out of Mina. In Mina, you will see this valley. This valley, leaving Mina, coming on our way to Arafah, we'll see this. Here the incident of Ashabul Fil, the people of the elephant. Surah Fil Alam Tara Kayfa Fa'ala Rabbuka Bi Ashabul Fil. So that incident took place here. Look at the borders. One is purple color, one is turquoise or blue. The, the, the purple board so shows what? Muzdalifa ends here. And Mina shows what? Mina begins here. Right? It's very important to see those boards because most of the time, the hujjaj are not inside, they are outside. You spend so much money for your hajj not to be complete and perfect. Here's the same thing. Arafah starts here. So, don't be out of the borders. Always try for, to be inside. As we come closer to Arafah, there's another masjid. 
Same thing, make your salah where? In the tent. Some people, some people don't have that sabr. They will walk from that tent all the way, all the way to the masjid. When they come to the masjid, they will find themselves still one kilometer far from the masjid because every masjid is full. So the best for you, avoid the heat of the sun. Now, some people says, no, me, I won't feel my hajj good until I climb that mountain. In the picture, it looks very small. Reality, reality, you won't be able to climb it. So that, uh, that white pole, white pole, see even the tents, this tent, all the tents are in Arafah. But those people says, no, I need to climb that hill. It's called Jabal al-Rahmah. Otherwise, my hajj is not accepted. No, brother, you are mistaken. Nabi Sallallahu never ever climbed that mountain. Nabi Sallallahu was around. Can you see the tent? Was around. So don't make it difficult for yourself and your wife. In the picture, it looks very easy. Reality. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. One lady said, Mufti Sahib, I'm very thirsty. I want just to buy one ice cream. I said, okay, go buy ice cream. I'm waiting. So a minute of her buying ice cream, she end up where? Where she end up? She thought that white thing is ice cream. She went all the way there. Reality between brackets, she lied to me. Ice cream was just an excuse. She went there. But subhanallah, she wasted three hours of my time to look for her. When I found her, I said, Mufisa, forgive me. I said, one word? Three hours for one word? No problem. We'll forgive you. Say, Allah will forgive us. Let me tell you something. It's not easy if you get lost. So all that heat went, I was on that heat because of this woman. May Allah Ta'ala forgive her. Okay? So don't do that. This time I will not forgive, I will not remember you. <laughs> now, you will see another sign of, of Qibla direction. Qibla direction. Why do we need that? While you are making dua, you need to find the Qibla direction. Now in this crowd, do you think if you get lost, we'll find you? One more thing, if something happen, if something happen, the bus stop, please don't jump out of the bus. If you jump, take a picture of the number of the bus, because all the buses look the same, and all the people look the same. If you are from Bangladesh, you will see somebody from Somalia looks just like you. <laughs> I'm telling you, the people look similar. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Can you see there? Can you see the minar of the masjid? These people, they could stay in their tent. But it says, no, let us go to the masjid. Look where they end up. This, inshallah, I don't know what's your arrangement. You can ask Brother Feroz if he arranged this for you. Now look, brothers and sisters. If you get lost, do we find you here? <laughs> Look there, make sure you are within the boundaries of Arafah. Right, Arafah ends here. The washrooms, not enough. So here I will, I will advise you, carry a plastic bottle with you for emergency. Right, for emergency, have a small bottle with you. Again, take a picture of your tent. Remember the sign of your tent. Because it's not only one group is living from Vancouver. There are many Canadians living for Hajj. Don't say we are brothers in Islam. At, if I get lost, I will be with the other group. Promise you, they won't accept you. <laughs> so, Arafah time after Zawal. After Zawal, right all the way to the sunset. Use your time. I calculated based on experience, it's six hours. Six hours. What I do? Every 20 minutes, I make a dua, I read Quran, I make tasbih, istighfar, recite the Quran, right? And I make a dua. Keep in mind, the whole idea of Hajj is what? Dua. 
So your Arafah is an opportunity of your Dua. The sun is about to set. So this time what do you do? So is it compulsory upon me to go make wudu just for the dua? It's not compulsory. So use your time properly and correctly. In some places, you will hear the sound of the cannons. Is in a sign of that, the sun set. Now, the night, the night of Arafah. Where are we now? Where are we? we are in Arafah. So after the sun set, what we do? Walk back where to? Muzdalifah. So look at this. From your, from, your, from your hotel in Mecca, you walk to Mina five kilometers. I said don't walk. Take a bus. From Mina to Arafah, 12 kilometers. Take a bus. From Arafah to Muzdalifah, seven kilometers. And it's at night. And everybody's walking. Don't walk. Be in the bus. Even if you need to sleep, sleep in the bus. What time will you arrive at Muzdalifa? What time? If you use the bus, you will arrive 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. But at least in the bus, if you are tired, you can sleep. And those people who will take a walk from Arafah to Muzdalifa, if the sunset is half past 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m., if they walk to Muzdalifa, they will arrive 9.30 p.m., three hours of walk. And if you take a bus, it will be 11, 12, 11, 12, even goes to, maximum is one o'clock, maximum. I will say, brothers and sisters, take a bus. Take a bus. Now, in Muzdalifa, what do we do? Maghrib and Isha will be combined. Maghrib and Isha will be combined. After you finish the Isa Salah, what you need to do? Collect your pebbles, collect your stones, collect your stones. So the day of Eid, we pelt how many stones? Seven. Eleventh, we pelt? Twenty-one. Correct or no? The day of Eid, how many stones do we pelt? Seven. Second day? Seven, seven, seven is? Twenty-one. So the tenth, Seven, the eleventh, twenty-one, and the twelfth will be twenty-one. Let's do calculation. Twenty-one and twenty-one plus uh, plus seven. That's why it's written there. Forty-nine pebbles. And for those brothers who want to add the the tenth, eleventh, twelfth, so it will be what? The fourth day, twenty-one. The total will be seventy. So the tenth. Is the Eid. How many stones do we pelt? Seven. Second day we pelt? <coughs> Third day? Fourth day? So for those people who are making plans to stay until the fourth day, the total will be 70 peb pebbles. But the fourth day is not compulsory. It's an optional. I don't know what the arrangement you made with the agent, so that, that you need to ask your agent. Okay? So I prayed Maghrib and Isha, where? In Muzdalifa. Muzdalifa, there's no tent. All the people are equal. Special service, non-special service. All of us, we are equal. The stars above you and the ground beneath you. And we are shedding the same heat, the same noise. So Muzdalifa, all of us equal. The money doesn't exist in Muzdalifa. Doesn't exist. So in Muzdalifa, what you do? You collect your pebbles. Not rocks, pebbles, small stones. Small stones. So in Muzdalifa, what do we pray in Muzdalifa? Maghrib and Isha, what else? Fajr Salah, right? Fajr Salah. Maghrib and Isha, where? In Muzdalifa. And Fajr Salah will be when? Also in Muzdalifa, when? The next? The next day, the, the next day will be what? The tent. The tent, what do we call it? Day of Eid. So we are in Muzdalifa now. Fajr Salah in Muzdalifa. After the sunrise. After the sunrise. What do we do? Now here, the buses won't be good for you. But for the elderly women, or woman is pregnant, I will say, sister, 
be in the bus be in the bus now this time if you if look if you want to walk i will say you saved your energy in mina in arafa in muzdalifa now walking from muzdalifa to mina is about 5 km and because you saved your energy for a few days if you walk this time it will be very easy it will be very easy and actually walking is easier than using the bus because the bus will stop very far in Mina and you find yourself walking double but for elderly women generally what they do they will pelt after Fajr Salah sorry before the Fajr Salah the bus will leave with the elderly people sick people pregnant women they will leave before the sun before Fajr Salah that is something something for them if you are healthy be patient pray your Fajr Salah in Muzdalifa then you can leave my wife is sick and I'm healthy be with your wife wife I am healthy and I want to walk my husband is not feeling well be with your husband I am good my sister is not good be with your sister right this in Muzdalifa there's a masjid also my advice to you be in the tent with your group Maghrib and Isha this is exactly where we pray Maghrib and Isha now should I take a big bag with me I will advise you no take in the bag you have a towel right you have a towel a toothbrush toothpaste okay you have a small pillow if you want and you have small bag for your stones and the bag for your shoes that's it can you see the stones the stones is the size of the hummus chickpeas again it's not a rock it's not rock no if I don't draw a rock I won't feel good no it's not like that at night right at night all the people equal for the ladies if it's possible can you see those tents we call it setup tents the minute you open it it set up itself I will say it's good for our women why because the whole day she was covering herself at least she needs to breathe so in the tent you can take off your clothes right so at least you can feel some fresh air so those tents especially is for women now leaving those people are leaving from where from Arafah to Muzdalifa I told you with the buses it will take longer so now in Muzdalifa we made Maghrib Isha and Fajr the Fajr will be what the tent so that is the 23rd of uh, is it correct the account correct 25th 28th so if Eid is 28 so that will be the 28th so now we'll be walking if you can for those elderly people sick people take the bus in Mina what do we do in Mina first thing pel jamratul aqaba they call it big shaitan right you pel seven after seven you come back to your tent because number two is what slaughter we are not going to slaughter anything why because the money was given to the agent the agent on my, our behalf the shepherd in the um, at the stable or at the abattoir or um, slaughterhouse they will slaughter you at the moment go relax go sleep because last night you didn't sleep you wait when the SMS the message comes to inform you that your sheep be, was slaughtered what you need to do number three shave your hair I will say it again men please take a haircut machine for your health don't shave in the street or by anybody else otherwise you'll pick up a sickness females very simple small scissor small for scissor how we do it for females example if this my hair right ladies if this my hair what you do hold all your head together right a size of a fingernail right then done but don't throw it it's your hair 
piece of paper tissue throw it in the bin for man for the man for the man this is your hair haircut machine is the best have comb number four and pass it all around the same level don't do one side zero the other side three in hatch is a great sin right one level four or level three level two level one or level zero whatever you like after that brothers and sisters most of the time most of the time the news comes that your sheep was slaughtered most of the time most of the time three o'clock four o'clock so what you do relax what you do relax but our hujjaj what they will do they will leave mina and they go to azizia are they going to azizia so from the tent stay at the tent now the days of hajj the days of hajj there's five days of hajj there's no transport do you remember i told you save your energy now you are going to walk from mina all the way to mecca to do what tawaf ziyara the compulsory tawaf if you did not save your energy what will happen you will be crying so that's what save your energy now my advice to you i told you most of the time what will happen most of the time your news that your ship was slaughtered comes three four even five asr salah is five maghrib i will guess half past seven eight o'clock so what you do brothers and sisters right pray your asr salah eat nicely right have a nice meal then take a walk slowly 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 like the turtles and the, and the snail when you arrive in Mecca to the Haram you will see the Haram is very very busy because everybody wants to finish his Tawaf Ziyara, Tawaf Al Wada uh, Tawaf Al Ziyara, Tawaf Al Ifada what you do brothers take it easy don't say I must be at the ground around the Kaaba you will not find the chance go to the first floor second floor it's a bit longer but it's safer for you especially if your wife or your mom or whoever with you is not healthy so look after them tawaf ziyara you have two days to do it day one the day of eid or second day you and your health and your company with you the best to do it the first night but if you can't postpone it for the second day but keep in mind you are still in your uh, sorry uh, sorry no after after we pelt we slaughter correct after we slaughter we shave the minute you shave you can wear your ihram uh, sorry you can wear your clothes you can have a shower except except connection with your wife doesn't exist right now there's no wi-fi do you understand me good you can have the connections only after the tawaf ziyara all the men are crazy they want to do tawaf ziyara on the same night but be wise and be patient why most of the night is very very difficult you know why it's difficult because of the same night you need to be back where mina that's why people will be pushing to finish his tawaf and get back in mina i will say again take it easy keep in mind you'll be walking from Mina to Mecca and from Mecca to Mina you will find the transport you will find but still the transport will drop you very far from the boundary of Mina and that time the vultures the taxi drivers will take an advantage do you know how much they will charge you before Hajj is three real five real this moment Hajj 200 reals for you and your wife so that's why I told you save your energy the days of Hajj don't walk when you'll be walking when the day of Eid means the night when you when you come to do Tawaf Ziyara what you need to do you are forced to walk you are forced to walk sometimes you will find some buses which they will charge you 20 riyal I will say brother if you find a bus 20 riyal give him 20 riyal per person at least he will bring you closer to the Haram but keep in mind you'll be still walking okay now i finish my tawaf ziyara tawaf ziyara my advice to you not at the ground floor second floor third floor 
right? After that, you have Sa'i between Safa and Marwa. Sa'i between Safa and Marwa. Same thing, not at the ground floor because it's very, very difficult. The easy way, go higher. Now I finish my Safa and Marwa. What should I do? Back in Mina. Back in Mina. Mina, at least, at least, try to be, be there before Fajr Salah. Fajr Salah is around 4 o'clock. So look at this. You remember I told you make Asr Salah and eat nicely. Then go for your Tawaf. Because a walk will take you 45 minutes to one hour walk. When you arrive, the Tawaf itself with the crowd will take you one hour and a half. So one hour and one hour and a half is two hours. Let's make it three hours. After that, Safa and Marwa also will take you one hour. So if we, if we do the calculation, at least I will say it's 10 o'clock at night. Now coming, leaving the Haram, you will not find the transport. I told you, you won't find it. And if you find it, you're going, you are going to pay arm and leg. You are going to pay a big price for that. So what you do? Two options. They will bring you closer, but you are going still to pay that amount. <coughs> or you take a walk. At least you'll be in Mina before Fajr Salah. So at least you spend some portion of the night in Mina. When you come to Mina, what you do? Most of the time you find yourself that you arrived half past three, 30 minutes left. Just be patient, make Fajr Salah and go sleep. Right? Spend the night in Mina. This is the, the tent. The next day. The next day will be what? 11th, right? Will be 11th. In 11th, how many, uh, how many stones do we pelt? 21. Seven, seven, seven. You begin with a small, then a medium, then the large. The small one, when you pelt, after pelting, example, look, I am pelting here, I pelt here, right? You move aside, you move aside, face the Qibla, make a dua, dua is accepted. Then after that, you pelt the second and you move out. This is very easy, you will see how the people do it, you just follow, right? Just follow. You pelt this side or the other side, it depends with your group and your crowd. After you pelt the second one, after you pelt the second one, what you need to do? You move the third one, there's no dua. You pelt and you move out. You pelt and you move out. Just to give you an idea how the Jamarat used to be. Old days, old days, Jamarat was known as Yawmul Maut, the death day. Why? Old days used to be one pole in the middle, like this picture. Like this picture? Can you see the third picture? It was you be like that. Guess four millions around that. Most of the time, Hujjaj used to die the day of, day of pelting. Right? But now, these old days, now five floors. Look how it looks. Can you see this here? This. So we count from the floor. One, two, three, four, sorry, five, six. Six floors. So this one, small, middle, or medium, and the bigger. And how you come out, look. Even you can come from outside, right to the roof. The roof is empty, but the ground floor is busy. Right? Here, just you follow the crowd. From the top is empty. Look there, empty. <coughs> Ground floor. And this one, they were busy with the first floor. Look there. Right, look here now. They pelt, they move, they are making dua, right? They are making 
دعا Now, there's a, a control announcement board. On the announcement board, there's three colors. It's like traffic lights, green, orange, and red. When it is red, don't take a chance. Don't take a chance. Just be sabrun jamil in your tent. It is orange, I will say relax. Only when it is green, go ahead. This is the, uh, the slaughterhouse, the abattoir. Here they were not allowed any hujjaj to come, only the agent. And again, for your health, please don't use anybody's blade or scissor or machine to cut your hair. Uh, question, is there any lady from this group is um, wearing niqab? Huh? So for the ladies who are wearing niqab, for the ladies who are wearing niqab, for your families, right? For the females are wearing niqab, please, my sister, take it from me. Don't ask many muftis. They will make your life miserable. You are allowed to wear your niqab. You are allowed. But try not to cover your face for full day. Me in your place, what I will do? Very simple. That's why I say take the bus. In the bus, on one corner, you can remove your, your niqab for a while. Do that a few times so it doesn't count that you covered your face full time day of hajj everybody is a mufti everybody has a say in the matter please don't confuse yourself right this here is tawaf people start coming for the tawaf right so the first floor second floor you will see tawaf begins here You found it in Arabic, English, Urdu, and Farsi. Fourth day is the 11th. Same thing, stay in Mina. Pelt all your three Jamarat after Zawal. Sometimes, even after Zawal, you won't be able to pelt. They will tell you after Asr is nothing wrong. Sometimes you are forced even after Maghrib, nothing wrong. Your safety comes first. So again, to remind you for the du'as, after the first pelt, seven, there's a du'a. Second one, there's a du'a. Third one, there's no du'a. I say so the same thing. Fifth day. If you are staying one extra day, same thing. 21, 7, 7, 7. Dua, dua, and the third one will be no? No dua. Is everybody staying until the fifth day or everybody's coming, the, uh, leaving the fourth day? Everybody's staying the, until the fifth day or the fourth day? Fourth day. So that your fifth day will be going to, Med to Medina, correct? Is that correct? So this day, right? You see there, the 10th is the day of Eid, 7. 11th, second day of Eid, 21. The third day of Eid, 21. The fourth day is 21. If we calculate this, it comes to 70. And if you are staying only until the 12th, which means uh, three days, after uh, three days, it will be 49. It will be 49. <laughs> Hajj is now complete. What left? Tawafu al-Wada'a. The farewell tawaf. This tawaf is not compulsory. Now for the sisters. If you spoke to your, your, your doctor and he advised you to take some pill to stop or to regulate your, right? Listen to your doctor. Now, immediately after you finish your tawaf al-fard, right? After that, Mr. Husband, I will say, take your wife to do her tawaf al-wada. After you finish tawaf al-wada, sister, if it happens that you got your, you are safe. Did you understand me, sister? You understand me? Okay, good. Why I'm saying that? Because sometimes the tablets you take, it will bring your very heavy and difficult and miserable. So for your health, for your health, after tawaful, uh, tawaful fard, the fard tawaf, sister, 
Do your tawaf al wada. At least, at least, your health will be, and even your will be easy. Okay? After that, I go, uh, as a woman, I got my, right, my. What should I do? I want to uh, still go to the haram with my husband. Husband, you do not enter the masjid, but you can enter from the back from, Tawa, from Safa and Marwa. Safa and Marwa is not part of the masjid. So it means you and your wife can be in Safa and Marwa. You can hear all the mashayikh, all the shuyukh reciting the Quran. Okay, that you can do, sister. Let's say now I'm in the haram and I got my very simple sister. Just walk out. Very simple. Just walk out. But it's a huge crowd. I can't move out. Nothing wrong. After the salah, you can come out. Right? <coughs> All right. Here now, here sisters now, leaving Mecca, going to Medina. This bridge calls the bridge of Quran. Here is Hudaybiyah. Here is Hudaybiyah. Now we arrive in Medina. On the road, what you do? Salah on the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? Salah on the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Either you take the bus, either you take the taxi, either you take the flight. Salah on the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Though the next one, I want to show you something quickly. Give me just five minutes of your time, then you, we are done, inshallah. Just five yes. minutes. In Medina, what do I have to do in Medina? Medina, the main thing is a salah on the Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam. And try your best to be in the masjid, not in the market. Because, I promise you sisters, whatever you buy in Mecca and Medina is made in China, same thing is in, in, in Canada. So you, you buy that side, it's cheaper because it's in real, but it's made in China. Unless you want to have extra weight, then you pay the customs. It will cost you the same in Canada. So use your aql. Alright? Sister, I can show you also something good also. Buy your gifts now in Canada. Keep it in the cupboard. When you come back, you can give it as a gift. <laughs> can you see the picture, the green dome? Can you see the green dome? So the green dome, let's say I, I'm going to put the green dome on the side. So it means I'm facing the Qibla. On the left side, can you see, like, is a symmetry. It's here, sisters, here. This is symmetry. So this door here, door 34, <coughs> gate 34 is Bab Jibril. From here you come out, you find yourself in the cemetery. But sorry women, there's no women, no women are not allowed, only men. What time? After Asr, immediately. After Isha, immediately. This, this are the washrooms. There's some washrooms for males and females. In Medina you will not get lost, sisters. Now. If you want to do any journey, any trip in Medina, my advice to you, after Fajr Salah, after Fajr Salah, make your plans. Why? At least you'll be back at the hotel at 11 o'clock. You can eat something, you can rest, and get ready for Dhuhr Salah. Where should I go? I will say to you, go to the museum. A museum will give you the full idea about the Muslim Islamic history. In Mecca also, when you have a chance, go to the museum. In Medina, go to the museum. There are different museums. Some museums are for Quran. They will show you how the Quran was written from day one until today's time. There are museums of um, the life of Nabi Sallallahu So I will say it easy for you. Look for museums. In Mecca, look also for a factory. Which kind of factory? Huh? Ghilaf. Right? The cloth of the Kaaba. Look, I told you the cemetery. Can you see the cemetery? Now, from the, from the last minara, that is gate 34. And those are umbrellas are open. That's why it looks like that. Those people are praying outside because the masjid is very busy. One advice to you sisters and, and brothers, avoid drinking cold zamzam because you will get sore throat and your tonsils will be affected and you'll be sick and miserable. So very simple, mix hot and cold. I told you when you use the cup, don't use the first cup. Use the cup in the middle. Why? Because sometimes by mistake, what they do? Instead of throwing the used cup, what they do? Put it with the, the new cups. Then you end up sick also. The reward in Mecca is 100,000 reward. Reward in Medina, 1,000. 
So it means one salah in Masjid Nabawi has a reward of 1,000 salah equal to 1,000 salah compared to the other masajid. Medina, when we get to Medina, the best is to give sadaqa. I'm not saying, I'm not saying give $10 sadaqa. $1, 50 cents, right? Look after yourself. Now the beggars, they know that you came for hajj. They will surround you. Brothers, don't be shy. Look after your money. When do we give charity? When? Tomorrow I'm traveling. That night I will give. Before that, my money will stay with me. Now, those are taking the bus. This road calls road Tariqul Hijra. The road of Hijra is the same road. Now, in between, the bus will stop. Again, sisters and brothers, keep some empty bottles with you. Because the conditions of the washroom there, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Right? This is the haram boundary. This is how it looks. Means when you come closer to this, you need to wear your ihram and you need to recite your talbiyah. Also, sometimes they will take you to some farms to buy dates. I told you, don't buy now. Two days before you leave, you can buy the dates. Here is a dua, easy dua for you. Salah on the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm trying to make it easier for you. <coughs> Etiquette. Same thing when we arrive in Medina. What we need to do? Settle first in your hotel. Have a bath. Rest. Dress up. Have some perfume. Some idr. Get ready. Salah Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Istighfar. Then you can go to the Masjid Nabawi. Now, for the ladies, they won't be able to see this. The in Arabic is written, Nawaitu sunnat al-i'tikaf. I'm making intention of i'tikaf, even though I'm not staying full night and full day. Even if you enter for one minute, Allah gives you a reward that you made i'tikaf in the Masjid Nabawi. The next one is Babu Salam, is the door when you enter to convey salam to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. At night, during the day, we enter from here, Babu, sorry, Babu Salam, from here, Babu Salam, from here. His door is gate number 40, gate number 40. Now inside, so can you see the arrow? I entered from door 40, while you are walking straight. See, can you see the, the color of the carpet? Red, and it changed to green. This is old, this is picture was taken before 2000, uh, 2018. 2019 now, the old carpet, it has a light green carpet, and the red became dark green carpet. But you'll be able to notice the difference between the two. The light green color, it means Rauda, Riyadul Jannah, right? How it looks from the front, ladies, this is how it looks like exactly. When we come from the back, from the back also they have signs for the ladies. Is written there. Huna Rasulullah. Huna means here is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Next is Abu Bakr, third is Umar. When it comes to the man, this is how it looks like. For the women, women, the time of visiting and Salah on Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is 11 o'clock and after Dhuhr and after Isha. Sisters, I will tell you what to do. Go early, 10 o'clock. At least you'll be with the first in the front so you can convey your salam. That moment what they do, they try to, to close the back section for the men, for the women to come in. Here is written, Haddu Masjid Rasulullah. On the top is written, the real boundary of Masjid Nabawi. Can you see the green carpet? So this is Rauda Mubaraka, Riyadul Jannah. This from the back. This from the back, the room of Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. This in the front when you enter, on the top is written, Salatun fi masjid hada bi alfi salat. Salah in Masjid Nabawi has a reward of 1,000 salah. Honestly, driving all the way, flying all the way to Medina for you to make salah in, in the bazaar, in the market? No, brothers. No, my wife has a jinn and her jinn likes to take her to the market. Her jinn must make tawbah. Right? Just a joke. Right? So look this now. And, and you will find the cops monitoring the crowd. So very simple, be easy brother, 
for your own safety, listen to the cops. Now, convey salam and they will leave. The door is open. At the back here, the ladies, can you see the back? They will bring you from the back. This is the area how it looks like. House of Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. This, when the masjid is empty, can you see the green carpet? This is from the mimbar, from the mimbar, from the pulpit, right to the house of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It calls Rawdatul Jannah. This mihrab, here Nabi Alayhi Salaam made salah. In the front, in the front is a red carpet. In the, uh, from, from uh, 1994, they built the front section. But now at this moment, the Imam is making salah at this mihrab, at this place, as Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi used to make salah. When there's a huge crowd, the second mihrab is in the front, is about maybe, I will guess, 10 meters. So ladies, this is how it looks from the front. On the top it shows Rasulullah Sallallahu Second, Abu Bakr, third Umar. What should you do? Very simple. Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum ya Abu Bakr. Assalamu alaikum ya Umar. And easy done. Here there's one verse here says, Inna alladheena yaghudduna aswatahum inda Rasulillah. Those who lower the, their voices before the Nabi alayhi salatu wassalam. Allah Ta'ala says, امتحن الله قلوبهم للتقوى. You have a sign when you lower your voice, when you come closer to the grave of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that you have piety, you have taqwa. Here, recite salam with utmost respect. Convey salam on behalf of others. Convey salam to Abu Bakr and Umar. Right? Method of salam, very simple. I will make it easy for you. Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salamu alaykum, easy one. And if you want to learn a long one, Salamu alayka ya Rasulullah, Salamu alayka ya Habibullah, Salamu alayka ya Khayr Khalqillah, that we can do inshallah ta'ala. Right? Say, so convey salam, your salam, your parents' salam, your friends' salam. Very simple. Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Easy. Now, how it looks inside? The first hole is the grave of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Second, Abu Bakr. Third, Umar. But my advice to you, after the salam, look, if I'm facing this side, if I'm facing this side, where's the Qibla? Where's the Qibla? It's behind me. So if I need to make a dua, I don't make a dua to the grave. I make a dua to Qibla. Okay? Is this clear? The reason why? Because when they bury us, our face will be facing the Qibla. There's the head of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be here, his legs will be here. Abu Bakr, head will be here, his legs will be here, and Umar, etc. So that's why when we greet them, Salamu Alaikum, right? And when we make a dua, we face the Qibla. Do you know why? Because our dua is to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, is not to Muhammad and Abu Bakr and Umar. You understand, brothers? Our belief, dua is for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We request, we beg Allah Ta'ala, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Only you will worship and only you will seek help. After you greet the Nabi alayhi salatu wassalam, you can make a dua while you are... If you want to cry, cry as much you want. One tear, one drop of tear is forgiveness of mountains of sins. So, take some onions with you also. <laughs> From the back, sisters, this is how it looks, sisters. From the back. Now here we'll see approaching the ladies' entrance. The ladies' entrance, let me tell you which number. Yes, there is here, subhanAllah. It's written there in Arabic and in English and in Urdu. It's an area of the ladies. If I'm not mistaken, gate 25. If I'm not mistaken. 25? Alhamdulillah. Now, general views in Masjid Nabawi. So, sisters and brothers, please try your best to be in the masjid, not out of the masjid. Pictures, you will have a time for pictures. Now, there's a main one here. Hadith says, perform 40 salah. If you perform 40 salah at the Masjid Nabawi, forgiveness of hypocrisy and sins. So, you pay the package. 
don't miss the dua, don't miss the forgiveness. At least when you come back, you come back with a new born child. Now, this gate here, this gate, it calls Babul Baqiyah, the gate of Baqiyah. You remember I told you at the beginning the cemetery is where? It was on the, on the left. So when we, we convey salam from Babu Salam, when we come out, we come out from Babu al from Babu al straight to cemetery. I'm almost done, I'm almost done. Here are some places here, you will see some signs, Ustuwanatul Haras, the pillar of the gods. Means Nabi Sallallahu gods used to stand here. You'll find Ustuwanatul Tahajjud, pillar of Tahajjud, means Nabi Sallallahu was making Tahajjud here. The inner front is Ustuwana Mutayyaba, Ustuwana Mukhallaka. Here Abdullah bin Salam made the Salah right here because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi made Salah right here. This is by the man section. Okay, there's some pictures just to show you an idea how it looks in the front. Outside here, outside here, this in this spot used to be the house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi came the first time to Medina, where, where did he stay? In the house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. But today's time, the house is what? It's just tile, open field. And the ground toilet. Monday and Thursdays, Monday and Thursdays, a lot of people will be, will be fasting. My advice to you, sisters and brothers, save your energy. When you come home, you can fast. When you enter Jannatul Baqi, I told you after Asr immediately and after Isha immediately. How it looks inside, sisters? There is it. I brought you the pictures. You don't say why. Only the man goes inside. So there is how it looks like. There's no signs at all. There's only stones. Stone is a sign that, that the grave is here. Now, places you want to go, there's how it looks. They say this, the grave, there's a grave of uh, one of the daughters of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is how it looks. At the back here, at the back, the back of the masjid, so, so one second, let me think. No. Can you see the green dome? Yeah. The green dome? Yeah. It says it's in the front. In the front, a small garden. The small garden here, Abu Bakr anhu, was appointed as a Khalifa, as a leader in this place. In this place, you find buses. Buses going to Uhud, three riyal is government buses. Three riyal if you want to go. But again, go after Fajr Salah. So at least you can come back for your breakfast. There are a few messages around. Masjid Quba is about three kilometers. Now here, what is the virtue of Masjid Quba? Masjid Quba, if a person performs two rak'ah in Masjid Quba, he gets a reward of one umrah. Of one umrah. Two rak'ah. One Umrah, four rakahs, six rakahs. You can do the calculation. I'm sure that you are good in calculations. All right. This is Quba, how it looks inside. This Masjid al Ghamama is Masjid of the cloud. Cloud is an incident to do with that. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the cloud covered him in this spot. So the Masjid was built. This Masjid is not far from Masjid Nabawi. Most of the time, the Masjid is closed. Two minutes, I'm done, inshallah. Masjid al Jumu'ah, the first Jumu'ah was in this masjid. This masjid also is closed because it's just 800 meters from Masjid Nabawi. That's why it's closed. Uhud. In Uhud, there's a famous masjid. Right? There's Uhud. No, brothers, I will tell you again. Please don't climb the mountains. It's not compulsory, it's not sunnah. Because if you twist your legs, you miss a lot of reward. Some people, they go first to Medina, then they go for to, uh, to Mecca. When they go to Medina, they will injure themselves. Time of Hajj, they will be relaxing one time. Here is the cemetery of Uhud. You will see a masjid. That masjid is a masjid of Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Inside, there are also some graves. Masjid Qiblatain also. Qiblatain because first time they were facing this Qibla, then the command was revealed to face the other direction. There are a few masajid, Masjid Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, Masjid Abu Bakr, Masjid Umar, even Masjid Imam Bukhari. So there are a lot of masjids around. Each masjid has an incident behind it. 
and of course I, I, I must respect your time so when you have a time inshallah we'll tell you all the stories now one of the masjids if you are going first to Medina leaving Medina when you come place called Dhul Hulayfa you will don your ihram you will don your ihram so Masjid Dhul Hulayfa this is how it looks like so what can I say about Medina Medina is easy Medina Salam Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and make sure all your salah will be in the Masjid Nabawi. Third one, if you want to plan any visit, any tour, do it after Fajr Salah. So at least you can come back, have your breakfast, have a shower, you can sleep, and also you can rest. And you don't miss your Dhuhr Salah. Subhanak Allah bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa adu. Just to tell you something, in Makkah and Medina, your WhatsApp calls won't be working. Only WhatsApp messages. So I will advise you to download Emo. Emo you can call. You can tell your family, those are in Canada, download Emo just for the period of Hajj so you can speak to them. So the Viber and the WhatsApp doesn't work. Only messages. So if you want to call your family, download Emo on your phone for the period of, of Hajj. Anybody has a question? We know the day of Arafah is a great day to fast, you get the reward of two years forgiveness for the sins. But this fast is not for the hujjaj. I told you, save your energy. Now, when do I need to fast? When? Nobody needs to fast. Can I tell you why? Because your qurbani, your dam qurbani or dam shukr is paid and is in the package. Means, look, old days, old days, they used to give you an option. What's the option? Okay, some countries, except Canada, some countries, they give you option that you pay the package excluding the amount of your the mushukr, the sheep which you slaughter. That wasn't included. But from Canada, it's included, right? It's included. So it means nobody is going to fast. The fast in Mecca, Medina, with that heat is not easy for anybody. It's not. So the option of fasting Generally, when the mushukr, the sheep is not included in the package. So what will happen? Because you know yourself, you are going for hajj. And you need to slaughter. And you don't have the money to slaughter. In this case, you will be fasting three days in hajj and seven days when you come back. But in your case, my brother, the mushukr is paid and part of the package. So there's no fast on anybody. Again, you need to save your energy. Now, for those, especially this happens a lot for, for males, where they cannot hold the urine for long. So, in, the, in this case, in this case, you make a wudu time of salah. But again, it's a huge crowd. If you leave, you cannot come in. Generally, 20 minutes before Adhan, the masjid is full. And most of the people find themselves where? Making salah out of the masjid so in this case all my respect to you sisters men you need to use condom to keep the drops of urine inside you understand and even if it leaks some people they have doubts and they cannot keep it if it leaks you will do still perfect and complete because it is inside you understand you understand brothers now one thing to tell you also Please take a shoe bag with you. Shoe bag. Why? Never ever leave your shoes in the shoe rake. Because you will never ever find it. And if you don't find it, I, I'm telling you, your brain will be boiling because you are walking on a hot tiles. Losing your shoes, losing your iman. So what you need to do? Keep your shoes. Don't be shy. In the shoe, uh, in the shoe bag, on your back. This embroidery is a sign of Hajar Aswad. <coughs> so the policeman and this embroidery is a sign of Hajar Aswad. So if Hajar Aswad is on my left, on the right will be a green light. So the green light is here. As you are walking, the green light hits you on your right shoulder. It means on the left shoulder is what? Hajar Aswad. You don't stop. What you do? You raise your hand, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, and you continue.
So the tawaf begins from Hajar Aswad, one round, second round, third round, fourth round. But you need to be a very wise person. As you are doing the tawaf, try to come closer to what? To the exit. Some people, they will begin here and they will end here. When they decide to come out with a crowd, what will happen to them? They'll be crashed. So what you do, as you finish one round, try to come closer to the exit. And what happens when you finish the seventh one, don't come out here, don't walk this way. Because all the waves, all the crowd are coming to you, what you need to do, you need to add extra quarter, extra quarter around, extra. The reason why so you can come out this way. When you come out this way, easier than coming out here. Reason why? Look here. Can you see this? Washing machine? Look here. For Maqam Ibrahim, what is inside? I will show you what is inside, so you don't need to push anybody what is inside. There's a footprint of Ibrahim alayhi salam. This one. Now, the dua is accepted at multazam. At multazam. What is multazam? Example, the sister who's standing at the back. On the same line, on the same line, she is here. The dua is accepted between Hajar Aswad and the frame of the door of the Kaaba. As long as you are here, one meter, two meters, ten meters, one kilometer, you are still on the same, same line. Your dua is accepted. When you drink Zamzam, the dua is accepted. Drink Zamzam with intention, Wallah, I don't want to go to the washroom, you won't go. Right, about Zamzam here. Remember I told you, not cold, mix, mix the warm with the cold. Otherwise, if you drink the cold Zamzam, what will happen to you? You will get sick. I'll show you this. Can you see the green light on top here? Can you see that? That the green light, it means on my right shoulder is a green light. On the left shoulder will be Hajar Aswad. Can you see this man here making dua? Here. You raise your hand. Bismillah. Allahu Akbar. Safa, the mountain of Safa. It's made here for Shujash to stand and continue. But again, look, mashallah, how many conversations are taking place? Marwa, nobody will stand there because there is a barrier, there is a glass. The dua also is accepted on Safa and Marwa. What dua? Any dua you like. Speaking about now the green light. Between the green light and the green light, you walk fast. If your wife is with you, relax and walk with your wife. About the, the ihram. So, what we do? I show you the way how we tie the ihram. Your right shoulder, right shoulder will be exposed for seven rounds. Seven rounds, your right shoulder will be exposed. And for the first three rounds, you walk fast. But in the crowd, in the crowd like this, tell me if you can walk fast. I will show you a picture and you tell me if you can walk fast with this crowd. What do you think? So means be in your place and walk with your wife. Walking fast is optional. Being with your wife is further on you. Now look here. At the moment of Safa and Marwa, people still, they forgot to cover its makru. It's Makru. And the hair, when you're done to shave or trim your hair, please don't do it in public. You are putting dirt, your dirt wear, in the masjid. Now it comes to Qibla. The Kaaba is our Qibla, right? Yes. So while you, are, while you are there, Hadith says 60% revealed on those making Tawaf, 40% on those who are making Salah. And 20 on those who are looking. I cannot make tawaf right now. What I will do? I will make a salah to get 40. 
and look at the Kaaba in my salah, what, what would they get? 20, 40 and 20? 60. 60. But people, what they will do? They will be looking everywhere. But the Kaaba, they are not looking at the Kaaba. Yeah, clock tower, looking at the clock tower, no reward. Looking at the Kaaba, reward. So it's up to you. You want to look at the clock tower? Very simple. I will tell you before you leave, go on Google, on WhatsApp, uh, on uh, YouTube. See all the clock towers, what, what it has. Now, one thing very important. We are not allowed to harm any animals, birds in the haram. You harm a pigeon, you pay amount of one chicken. Right? The value of a chicken, how much is one chicken? $50? dollars Huh? Right, you harm a pigeon, you pay an amount of one chicken. You harm, you harm something on the size of the, of the sheep, you pay one sheep. Example, let's say I harmed something, something that has the size of, of a sheep, you pay for that. Example, I harm the dog, you are going to pay an amount of a sheep. Here there's areas of washrooms for males and females. If your husband, you and your wife decide now to use the washroom, nothing wrong to use it, but remember what number and wait for your wife there. The day of Jumu'ah, my advice to you, be in the masjid by 10 o'clock. Look, it's empty 10 o'clock, right? Half past 10, look. Otherwise, what will happen to you, you'll find yourself Jumu'ah is on the street. Look, Jumu'ah on the street. Can you see this uh, um, garbage bin? It's the same one here. There's it. Okay, in Mecca, around the masjid, one of the gates when you come out, you see library. Ask the people, was a library? The library is the place where Nabi Asma was born. There are few masjid also. This masjid is known as Masjid al Jinn. There's an incident to do with the jinn that night. They came to hear the Quran of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They embraced Islam. And they went back to educate and teach their own people. I told you about the factory. The Kiswa factory. It's something good to do in your free time. Also there is the Quran, Quran factory. Also it's very good for you. Okay, but subhanakallahumma.